Hi, I'm Beth from Sew Country, and today's tutorial is for the Stash and Trash Car Caddy from Maple and Sunshine Boutique. This is my first time sewing one of their patterns, and this was so much fun. If you know me, you know that I love patterns that are practical and that can be useful, so this fit perfectly for me. This pattern is designed to be strapped around your car, the back of your car, and so it can be used to store things in there or for a trash can. I promise you I will not be using this as a trash can. It is way too cute. She has an optional slip pocket to put in there, which I think will be perfect if you're using this in your car for things like wipes or anything, your phone, anything you don't want to get lost and dig for. The opening is extremely wide, so you can fit lots of stuff in there. While I was sewing this, I thought of so many other ways that I want to use this pattern for. So I'm going to give you a couple of them, and as I think of more later, I'm sure we can post them in her group to kind of talk about all the benefits this little caddy can have. So yes, it can be used in the car. I'm also going to attempt to make one today during this video in clear vinyl. I will be putting grommets in the back of it instead of these straps so I can hang it on the wall in my sewing room. I feel like this would be the perfect size if there is a new pattern I'm wanting to work on. I could put the pattern and the pieces in there, maybe some of the hardware, zippers, materials, things like that. Um, I also thought it would be great for a nursery. So for the baby's room, you know, you could even strap this across the front of the changing table and something like that for you to put your little diapers and wipes and any kind of creams or lotions you want to put in there. You could even put it inside the crib if that's allowed. I don't know if that's still safe and have little toys in there for the baby to play with. I thought about in a kid's room, you could even strap this on their bed or by their bed and have their toys or books in there. I thought about using it even in the kitchen to store your plastic bags or your um, reusable bags or anything you're using. So this bag to me has so many different options. So don't just use it as a trash can. <laughs> use it as so many other things. So let's go ahead and get started so you can see how quick and fun this comes together. In this bag, I'm using fabric from Royal Pixie Custom Fabrics and I'm using a waterproof canvas. This is a cotton and so I did interface it with an SF101 equivalent. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I only use interfacing from Royal Pixie. So I'm using the Royal Pixie Light. For the one I'm sewing up today, I will show you all the pieces you need, but it comes together super quick, so let's just go ahead and get this one out of your way. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need one yard of webbing, and so you'll cut that into two pieces. Those two, pe those two measurements are given in the pattern, so have your webbing. If you're going to do the optional slip pocket, you don't have to, but if you want to do it, it's super cute. You will need to cut and interface one piece of cotton. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to clip this right sides together because we're going to sew that just like a traditional slip pocket. So I'll go ahead and have that ready to go. For the bag I'm sewing today, I'm going to be using fabric from J&R Edwards. And I'm going to have two pieces for my exterior. This is a cotton and I did interface it with the SF101 equivalent. And so you can see this is going to be the front with the cutouts on the bottom. This is going to be the back with the cutouts on the bottom. That's the only two pieces you need for your exterior. Then for the lining, I'm going to use waterproof canvas again and you will have those same two pieces. It is pattern pieces. You'll have those same two pieces. For the lining. If you're using a cotton, you would want to interface that as well with the SF101 equivalent also. Since I'm using waterproof canvas, I don't need to interface this one. The only other thing you'll need is a buckle. Now, unfortunately, I'm down to my last buckle, so I'm going to show you how to install it on this one, and it is called a side release buckle. I just get these on Amazon. I usually have them in bulk, and so I just ran out. So I will show you how to install it whenever we're ready to do that step on this one, but I'm just going to order some more for my second one that I'm sewing. 
That is all the materials you need to sew up one of these little car caddies. Now, like I said, I am going to sew one up with clear vinyl during this video, and so I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use with that and just talk to you just a little bit about it. I am going to be using this clear vinyl from Royal Pixie, and I am just going to use one piece for the front, one piece for the back, the same pattern pieces, I'm not changing anything. I'm not going to line this, I'm not going to use binding, I am not going to use webbing. I'm going to keep it super simple. After I sew this up, I'm just going to put two grommets there. This is a PVC and not a TPU. I chose a PVC because I wanted that little bit of extra structure so that hopefully it would have a little bit more shape. If you wanted to bond it to try to give it some more structure, that would help. It's just I'm going to choose not to do that for this video. So now that we've talked about all the pieces that we need for this pattern, let's go ahead and start sewing everything up. As always, I tend to sew things a little bit out of order, and I'm going to do the same with this one, and I apologize if that frustrates people. It's just, it makes sense to me the way to do it this way, and I just go ahead and do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to grab that slip pocket piece if I'm doing it. If you're not, you just skip this step. I'm going to go ahead and use the seam allowance given in the pattern. We will be using one seam allowance pretty much throughout the, this pattern. I'm, I have these clipped. I have this clipped right sides together. I'll start sewing down this end, back stitch, come down here, pivot, and then come here and stop and back stitch as well. Break my stitches. Come over here and do the same thing. Back stitch, sew, pivot, sew, back stitch. After I do this, you will see me turn this right sides out, I will use my stiletto to poke out the corners. Now that I have this sewn together and turned right sides out, all I'm going to do is come, open, come to this opening, put my fingers in and just pull. The, it'll naturally want to just kind of go inside those raw edges. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a clip and put in place there. If you want to take this over the iron, of course you could. I tend to like to go ahead and top stitch this and have this as my top edge. A lot of people don't like to do that. So if you don't like the way that looks, you can always top stitch this edge and have the opening be closed when you sew it onto your lining. This is just the way that I prefer to do it. Rolling out my seams just a little bit and putting a clip there so they kind of get ready to be sewn onto the lining. Now what I want to do is just top stitch across this top edge and this will be considered the top of my slip pocket and it will also close up that hole. I make sure everything's lined up and whenever I sew it I'm just going to sew an eighth of an inch away and I'm going to take my time and make sure that I keep that nice and straight. Now that we have that top stitch, we're going to go ahead and attach this to our lining. We're going to attach it to the back piece of the lining. That is your bigger piece. The cutouts are going to be the bottom of your bag. These beveled edges will be your top. The pattern tells us how far down we measure to place this. She also tells us that we'll need to center this, so I have my center marking on there. I'm just going to find my center marking here. And I'm going to, I've already made my line, so I'm just going to line this up on that line and center it. I'm going to make sure everything is nice and straight. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over the machine and I'm going to back stitch right here and go down that edge, pivot, pivot, back up and back stitch. If you wanted to put some rivets in there for a decorative point, you could. I'm not going to on this one, but that is an option as well. I will be sewing an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge that we just sewed. I finished attaching my slip pocket to the back lining. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the lining front and I am going to place it right sides together with the back. I'll match up 
all the edges on the bottom and the sides. The top will not match because it is larger in the back. I'm going to add a few clips and then I'm going to start sewing this. I'll sew this down each side. I will use the seam allowance given in the pattern and I'll make sure I back stitch at the top and the bottom. Now for my lining, this is where I'm going to leave my opening to turn it. So I'm not going to worry about the corners right now. We will box those corners in a minute, but for right now I'm going to start sewing on one side of the bottom, back stitch, come over, back stitch again, break my stitches, leave my opening to turn the back, and then sew this other side as well. That's how I'll do the lining. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my exterior and we're going to do this all the same time. Back of your exterior is right sides up. Front of your exterior is right sides down, putting these right sides together. Add some clips to line up your sides and your bottom. Again, the top will not line up because they are different sizes. On this one, on the bottom, we will sew all the way across. We will not leave an opening in our exterior. I'm going to also go ahead and pull out that clear vinyl and do it the same exact way. Back is right sides up, front, right sides down. I'm going to match up all the edges on the sides and the bottom, and I'm going to sew down one side, across the bottom, up the other side. I'm going to use the same seam allowance and I'm not going to leave an opening in this because after we sew this, we will just box the corners and be done. Since there is no lining, we do not need to leave an opening. So what I'm going to do now is sew up the sides and the bottoms of all three of these components. So now we've sewed down the sides and the bottom of each one of these. The only one that has an opening in the bottom, bottom will be our lining. The next step is to box our corners. I'm just going to put my hand in the middle and I'm going to push these two seams together. I want to nest these seams, meaning that one seam will go one way, the other will go the other way. I'm going to make sure that I match up these raw edges. I can do that by creasing the sides and putting a clip there. If they're not lining up properly, just go in the middle and make sure that everything is flattened out. This is what it'll look like from your sides. This is what it'll look like from the back. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to sew straight across here with the seam allowance in the pattern. You're going to back stitch on both sides. I'm going to do this for all of these. So two on my exterior, two on my lining, and then the two also on my clear vinyl. for all three of the components I had. One other thing I forgot to mention is that I always like to make on the bottom, here's the bottom of this, I always like to make sure that the seams go in the same way and I don't have them going different ways. So that's something I forgot to mention on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn my exterior right sides out. I'm going to leave my lining wrong sides out and with the clear vinyl, I'm done with it, except for adding the grommets at the top and possibly a rivet if I need it. So let's go ahead. I'm going to trim the seam just a little here at the bottom to make it just not like um, PVC can sometimes be a little sharp. And so I'm just going to kind of curve those points a little, not really trimming or curving. So let's go ahead and turn this out and let's just see if it was a good choice to try this or a poor choice. Oh my gosh, guys, look. 
look how cute that is. Okay, I'm so happy I did it. Oh, so now what I want to do is, I feel like it is firm enough because I'm going to have the two grommets and I'm actually going to have it hanging on the wall. So those grommets will provide enough stability for me to not have to worry about riveting the sides. Now, if you were wanting to have this just to sit somewhere, you maybe would want to rivet. And what I would do is I would just push these together and kind of rib it like that. It would change up the shape a little, but it would give you a little more structure. Also, if you wanted to add some binding, you could add binding on the inside and also around the top. Um, the inside binding would help give some more structure. The exterior binding would just be for a prettier shape, maybe look a little more finished. But no, for me, this is too cute so i'm gonna put the grommets in this and what i'll do is i'll add the grommets at the same measurement she says to come in on the sides but i'll just add it lower so that it can have plenty of room to not slip out and i will use those command hooks on my sewing wall on the walls in my sewing room and just hang that up there super cute i love it oh my gosh so definitely try that with clear vinyl. I did choose to use PVC. Yes, PVC is a little bit trickier to turn, but if you use the TPU, you wouldn't get this structure. It would not, it would be kind of bowing or leaning or flopping a little bit more. So try it with the PVC. Super cute. Okay, let's move on. Sorry, I gotta go forward. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attach that webbing. The pattern tells us how far in to measure. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to add my two strips of webbing. She tells you how long, how big to cut the webbing. And then you're just going to add it flush with that top there. At the measurement she tells you to add it to. I'm going to do that on the exterior. Clipping it in place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew these two pieces on. So I'm just going to baste those two pieces there. So we've got everything ready. Now it's just time to finish up the bag. It's really that quick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep my lining wrong sides out and I'm going to just slip my exterior in. I'm gonna push the, that webbing down there. And I'm gonna first match up those side seams. I will put a clip with my side seams. Now she says to butterfly these seams to open them and I'm still a little uncomfortable with that so I'm gonna keep mine closed but I see her reasoning for saying butterfly instead of nesting the seams because it kind of helps reduce the bulk but I'm gonna just go ahead and nest mine again. Um, definitely follow the pattern on anything for you know because pattern designers test and she's made so many of these so she definitely knows what she's talking about so you can definitely do that with no issues or worries or concerns at all I'm going to match up this top edge I'll match up the point first and then kind of clip around Okay, so now I have this clipped all the way around. I'm going to sew around this top edge with the seam allowance given in the pattern. I will take my time whenever I'm coming to these pivot marks, especially these sharp corners, to make sure that I stop with my needle down and pivot to stay on track with my seam allowance. I'm also going to, whenever I go over my webbing, I will go over the webbing, then backstitch a stitch or two, and then go forward, and before I get off of the webbing I'll backstitch again just to add a little more security to my two webbing pieces. After I'm finished sewing I'm not going to trim down my seams. I'm just going to come and pull my exterior out through my opening. So I'll open that up then I will um, roll down my seams, top stitch and close up the bottom and be done except for adding the hardware. So 
so here is how my caddy is looking so far. I turned it right sides out through the opening in the lining. I took the time to roll my lining down, open up those seams a little with my fingers, just kind of roll the seams and place clips all along there. Now what it's time to do is it's time to top stitch all along this top edge and also we'll have to close up that hole, the opening in the bottom. The way I'm going to sew this for the top stitching, since it's such a soft bag, I'm going to kind of sew it like this. So I'll be sewing from the right sides, but I'll have it kind of open. If you're not comfortable with that, you can turn it inside out or you can sew it from the lining side, whichever way is your preference is fine. When we come to our straps, we're going to make sure when we're sewing that they are up and out of the way and we'll just sew. We won't sew on the straps, but we'll sew on the exterior. And I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch away from that folded edge. Then I will also close up the opening in the bottom of the bag. So now I've completed another car caddy. <laughs> These are so cute. I love them so much. So in that quick of time, I did two of them. Of course, one was clear final. The only other thing I have to do is I have to finish up the straps. Like I said, I have only one of these side connectors left. And this one I want to give to my daughter, so I want to finish it first. This one I'm keeping for me. So I want to finish hers first. So let's talk a little bit about how we do that. She tells you exactly which side to start with. She tells you to put the shorter piece of webbing with the side of the side connector that doesn't adjust, so the stationary one. So you just feed it through and then you fold one end of your webbing down and then you fold the other end down. You're just going to sew across that. I usually just sew two rows of stitches. You could also do a rivet your preference, but I'm just going to sew. On this other side, what we do, let me unhook this and take it apart so you can see. And if you want to keep it connected while you do this to make sure you don't get it installed backwards, that might be a good idea too. But I'm just going to feed one of my one end of the webbing through the top and then feed it back through the bottom. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to just fold that raw edge in and back onto itself. So it'll be free hanging. So that little strap there won't be attached to anything else. And then that way you can adjust it a, a, to adjust it. To whatever size you may want or whatever you need to attach it to. I will on this one I will just do the two rows of stitching also to complete that side as well. So for me I am done with three of these and I promise you I'm going to be making so many more. I love these just to use around my house but I also think these are going to be great at my craft shows and even for special orders. I can just see so many uses for them and I really love how quick they come together and you get to use just such a beautiful fabric without like having to buy a lot of it where it's a smaller project. I hope you guys enjoyed this project too. I hope you're not getting tired of me doing video tutorials that are just quick and fun and practical. If you have anything you want me to specifically sew a tutorial on, just let me know. I'm open to all suggestions and I'm going to have the link for the fabrics and I'm going to have a link for the pattern, the Facebook groups, everything in my description. And I hope you have a good time sewing and I hope you sew up one of these and I'll see one of yours soon. Thank you so much and you guys have a great day.